Good afternoon. I am so excited to be with you today. Uh, we are celebrating today Embracing Change, which has kind of been our theme. And uh, today we're talking about why not be rich. Okay, does that excite you a little bit? I wouldn't be at all surprised if I get more than the usual number of views on this because people go, ooh, I want to be rich. Well, there's every possibility you can be and that if you are not right now, maybe you are standing in the way. When I first started, you know, when I decided that I wanted to talk to you about this today, it seemed real simple. I'll just throw out this and that. But the more I thought about it, the bigger it got. And I know that this is not going to be the last little bit about uh, prosperity that uh, we're going to be talking about. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking I'm going to do a book study. Uh, so we may be shifting gears again, and there are just so many good ideas out there, so many ways I would like to bless you with great new ways of thinking. Uh, one of the taglines that Unity used for a number of years, uh, they, they would have uh, Unity magazine, and it would say, Unity, a way of life that works. Now the Unity movement uses... Um, uh, unity uh, is um, creating a way of life that works for all. So in other words, we're reaching beyond just the unity churches or whatever, you know, because we're, we're not limited and, and uh, our belief system is not limited. But let's back up a minute, blah, 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 blah. back to the beginning so uh, we can catch up with our usual... Um, opening information. Uh, my name is Reverend Alicia Leslie. I'm from Spirit of Unity Church, which has moved from a physical uh, experience to a spiritual one out there in cyberspace. So I have an on, uh, this is an online ministry. Doesn't look like a ministry. Looks like sitting around chit-chatting. But isn't that the way that it probably was back in the day? You know, when people followed Jesus and they would, uh, oh, don't get scared, don't get scared, I'm not going into a religious toot here. But they would follow a great teacher and learn great stuff. And so um, I follow a great teacher, which I hope makes me an acceptable teacher, that I can share great stuff with you. Everyday wonderful stuff. Starting with the National Day Calendar. You know that's one of my favorite things to share. And today, it is National Milk Day. The day actually commemorates uh, the beginning of um, home delivery of milk. The milkman used to come. And I think that's funny because sitting right across from me over there is my Instacart order uh, waiting to be put away. I didn't order much, but I finally ordered groceries. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have Triscuits in the house. <laughs> and um, I don't know how uh, how well thought out my, um, my shopping was today, but uh, um, it's my first time doing Instacart for me. I've done it for my daughter before, but anyway... We're not talking about National Milk Day when we're talking about Instacart. You can't do both. Um, so, but I do remember the day when I had not groceries, but we had milk delivered. Um, at first, they would just come, and I always remember the sound. the The milkman would come, and the truck would pull up, and he'd grab the handle of the. Uh, it was like in a little uh, metal grate kind of a case, and he'd clank, 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 clank out to the door, but up, but up. He'd put the bottles on our back step and then them out again. And uh, if it were really cold like it is today, it is bitter today. I, I haven't been able to warm up, warm up even indoors because it's so cold out. But um, when it was really cold and the milkman came and he left the milk, you had to try to get out there real quick and get it. If you didn't, 
and very many times we didn't, what would happen is the milk bottles, now this was before uh, homogenized milk, so the milk and the cream would separate. So you would get your, in the store, you would get the bottle of milk and you'd see it was kind of a lighter white to a creamy color on the top. Well, when it froze, that cream would come shooting out the top of the bottle. And uh, it was kind of like ice cream, but it wasn't sweet at all. So, um, but I remember those days when we would get the bottle milk. Then a number of years later, they made uh, little insulated uh, boxes so that the milkman would come flip open the box, put in the bottle of milk, close it, and that pretty much uh, kept it so it didn't shoot out the top unless it was really, really cold. But uh, so Milk Day, that's what we're celebrating today. And as we celebrate the arrival of milk, I'm celebrating the arrival of my Instacart order, uh, which I didn't have to go out in the cold into the store. And I didn't have to uh, spend hours in the store and buying stuff that I really didn't want because I was, it was there. <laughs> because it was there and I was there. Um, so I, uh, and why not be willing to, pay for a service that is meaningful to you. This is where the prosperity is going to come in just a couple minutes. But anyway, it is also, oh, and it says one of the activities that you can do on National Milk Day is uh, make cheese. Now, I have, I'm not doing that today, but I remember with such uh, joy when I did make cheese last year, I think, during our shutdown. Uh, clothes in whatever the heck it was um, yeah that was very exciting and I, I would like to make some cheese again another day when uh, I'm not doing 85 million other things so it is also and this is not such a light subject it is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day it is unbelievable to think it's just unfathomable to think that people are being lured, sold, or stolen into uh, human trafficking. Now, the human trafficking, typically what comes to mind is sex, but it is also labor. And, uh, you know, my heart aches at the thought of the people that have been uh, caught up in this. And they have what they call the 31... 31,8 uh, project, and the 31,8 project is uh, based on Proverbs chapter 31, uh, verse 8, where it says, speak out for those who cannot speak for themselves, and who, um, for all who are destitute. So there are people that have huge needs, and uh, we want to um, we want to be aware of it and do what we can. Some people can volunteer time. Some people can uh, donate money. So I do encourage you to think about: Is there a way that you can help uh, to conquer human trafficking? We are all one. We are all brothers and sisters, all colors, all, all lifestyles, all socioeconomic levels and religions. We are all one, just like every cell in our body. And our body can only function because every cell and organ is working together. So we are a cell or an organ or a body part in the great body of, of Christ of God. And so uh, let's take care of each other. That's what we need today more than ever. So that is a good awareness day. It is also National Shop for Travel Day. Now, when I read that, I'm like, Shop for Travel Day? I don't feel like shopping. I don't feel like thinking about going anywhere shopping for anything. And I have found not all things can be well shopped online. And one of those, especially if you're a little person, um, clothing is very, very difficult, and uh, getting the quality you want, sometimes you just have to, like they used to say, feel the fabric, just 
Feel the fabric. You got to know it's good fabric you got there. Um, I hope I didn't offend anybody with a little Yiddishness. But um, yeah, so I, I really prefer to, to shop in person. But the thing about shopping for travel, again, it is about prosperity. It is about being rich because instead of feeling closed in and cold and stuck, when we shop or plan for travel, we reach out and we lift our mind and we think of good things and happy times and good places. And um, the one thing, caveat, if you are shopping for clothes online, if you find it, some things I have shopped online for and it's, it does well. But uh, just to uh, don't lie to yourself and say, I'm going to get everything in a size 8 because that way by the time I can travel, I'm going to be a size 8. Not the way to do it. That's negative thinking. Just get what fits and know you're going to have fun. Easier to take in than let out, right? Okay, well, that's pretty much it. Oh, um, and it is also, I do not agree with this one. <laughs> they say if you're young at heart and children should participate in um, Step in a Puddle and Splash Your Friends Day. Not doing it. First of all, if I tried to step in a puddle right now, I'd slip and fall on my butt and probably break something. Uh, because it is uh, 17 or less. It's going to go down to single digits tonight. <laughs> but uh, so, but it, even if there were puddles, no. I, uh, splashing my friends, no. I, even when I was a kid. Well, there was that time that this girl tried to take my sock monkey. And I wouldn't give it to her. So she came at me. And I was on the swings. And I backed way up on the swings. There had been a rainstorm earlier. So underneath the swings was a puddle. And I did swing through that puddle. Heels out. And I splashed her. <laughs> but then again, I wasn't splashing a friend. It wasn't like I was splashing a friend. <laughs> Okay, enough of the National Day calendar. Uh, let's talk about why not be rich. Do you feel rich? Or do you feel like, oh, when the bills come in, oh, God, the bills are here. Uh, I feel like, a, you know, it's draining out. Do you feel like sometimes, you know, uh, when I was expecting our twins back, back, more than 50 years ago, and um, I would get calls from bill collectors, and I had a baby, my, my, my oldest son was 15 months old when my twins were born, and uh, so I was getting bigger and bigger, and I had this little baby, and then uh, I would get a call from a bill collector, and I would have to go in the other room and throw up, um, which I also did if I had to iron <laughs> It was uh, the way it was. But um, uh, I just lost my train of thought when I thought about having to iron. I, do you know I do not own an iron? I don't like to iron. I don't buy things that need to be ironed. And I, so that's one way I'm rich. No, I don't have a maid to do my ironing. I just buy clothes that don't need to be ironed. Um, we tend to think that being rich has everything to do with having, you know, the money, the cars, the mansion, the, all that kind of stuff. But Eric Butterworth, who is a unity minister, said that prosperity is not about uh, money and things, about having money and things. It's a way, prosperity is a way of thinking and being. Likewise, he said, poverty is not about a lack of money and things. It is a way of thinking and being. So, if you're feeling, and, and you can have, people can have so much money and stuff, 
and after a while they don't even see it it just becomes a part of the landscape and then they're hunting for what's next because they're looking uh, for an, uh, a false sense of what real prosperity is and real prosperity is about being satisfied with what you have and handling it well oh my gosh there is so much so much I would tell you and I can tell I'm already probably gonna run out of time today but sometimes when we have a lot of stuff and we don't respect it the universe spirit God doesn't want to give us anymore because we're not taking care of what we have uh, case in point I used to teach uh, dancing it's a belly dancing and when I would teach my class this was, this was before the days you could stream music and uh, so what we would have or, or make playlists back in those days I would figure out my class in advance and write down the all the different dances we were going to do and stuff like that and then I would have to change from one record to another you know the big old 33 and a third thingies yeah put those on and you I then you have to take the needle and you have to find the song on the disc oh my god things sure are different aren't they well I did not treat my records really well I would be in my class I'd be running through it I'd toss out one toss it on the floor on top of my other record covers and uh, you know put them back and forth and so I always had to buy new ones I didn't have to buy new ones because of the fact that well, I, ha I did not have the prosperity consciousness to appreciate what I had and take care of it, so I had to keep replacing it. You know, if I got to tell on myself to help you be more prosperous, I think that's what I would rather do. So if you can learn from my mistakes, but the most important thing I want you to learn is it's in our consciousness. It's in our awareness. Did you ever wonder why people can win the lottery? And you hear, you hear these stories more than you hear stories of people that were successful in winning the lottery. M many people, I, one time I did look it up, and I think it was, I think it was like 60% of the people lose it all within a particular period of time. And um, it's because they, uh, they don't have a rich consciousness. It's like that there is truth behind the words, easy come, easy go. And that is because people, it came so easily. I think it is not as, you're not as consciously aware of what it can take to have it and they're so happy to have it a lot of times it is wasted it is you know uh, kinda goes away faster than it came so um, if we want to have we want to have a prosperity consciousness and a consciousness of responsibility and this is very very different than what a lot of people have because another thing is people that get money and save their their money hoarders and they get it and they save and they save and they save and they save and and they die and they leave it all behind and they never really lived and enjoyed what they had see prosperity money richness has to circulate you have to be able to get into the flow and a lot of times that means you gotta let it go you know that I'm getting used to that with my uh, consciousness my awareness of uh, being a minimalist of, of a moderate moderate minimalist of being able to let stuff go and but because of that, I, 
I might have less stuff, but the stuff I have, I like more and is I can buy more expensive something that is less. I can also enjoy all the things that are not um, uh, material, you know, the consumable things like travel, <laughs> buy your clothes for travel, uh, shop for travel, um, because the, the things that are um, without uh, anything's going to clutter up the house that you have to dust and take care of, and even though you might like it, if you're not using it, it, it just, it's another thing that bogs you down. It's like clogging up the pipes of the flow of prosperity in your life. A unity minister and teacher, um, uh, what's her name, Emily Cady, talked about not being stagnant, that everything needs to flow to come in and go out. And that is everything. That is our pure life force. One of the things we said in, in unity is that we, we invite spirit to work um, with us, in us, through us and for us. So that's, again, that's that circulation. Now the person who, um, let, let's, let's go back to Instacart for a minute. As I'm doing the Instacart, it's telling you how much the delivery and how much the tip that, you know, it recommends the tip, how much you want to give. I always try to tip more than and um, and when I thought about how cold it was and the, the young woman that brought me my groceries tonight and, you know, and uh, left them on the porch and she had to go out and do all the work. And I'm sure she's happy getting her paycheck and she's happy getting a tip. It was a good stop for her. And but again, that's about circulation. If you're penny pinching, if you're thinking, well, it costs $7 to have that order delivered. Yeah, and how much would it have cost in your time, in your gas, you know, how, how much time would and money would you have spent in this process? Another thing you look at is, what is your time worth? If your time is your life, so you're going to give a piece of your life to it, is it worth it? To me, it was absolutely worth it in every way to pay for the delivery, to pay for the tip. And it wasn't all in all, when you come down to it, it wasn't that much for what it gave me. In the, in the money I would have spent for gas and the time I would have spent going to the store, the extra money I would have spent getting impulse items that would probably wind up in the trash another day, you know. Um, I came out of it just fine. If I, on the other hand, was thinking like a victim, oh, I don't want to go out, it's so cold, and I don't want to drive, and, and if I would have forced my little self to drive to that grocery store, moaning and groaning when I got in the car, when I got out of the car, when I went through the store, when I went through the checkout, when I came back out, went out of the store, went into the car, went out of the car, went into the house, slept my groceries. This, see, that's what makes me feel rich. Giving makes me feel rich. If you don't think you're rich, look at your kids. They think you are loaded. <laughs> they think they they think you can give them everything they would ever want. They just you just won't, <laughs> and they don't want to hear your stories about not having any money because they think you got it somewhere there in the bank. And, and but don't we think that that God can give us anything we want? Yeah, we kind of go that way. Um, okay, let's see. I just want oh here's another thing. If you want to be rich, work on being debt free again this is a matter of consciousness it's in your mind and i want to be really clear there's nothing wrong with having money there's nothing wrong remember it is not money that is the root of all evil it is the love of money 
it is putting money before your brothers and sisters. <coughs> Excuse me. It's putting money in, in, in front of even God. Okay. Um, so, you want to participate in the law of circulation uh, and being, when we talk about being debt-free, when all those bills come in, those people gave you that product or service with the confidence that you were going to pay that bill. Now I'm going to go back to another darker stage of my life. I had, for most of my, well, coming up on, uh, I'm, I'm starting to go past the half of my life point. Uh, but for a very good portion, probably close to half my life, uh, I was, I had a very uh, bad financial prosperity consciousness. I thought I was less than, had less than, and was worth less than. And I was told that, you know, hey, put on the TV. They're going to want you to buy a, a Lexus whether you can afford it or not. They're going to make it like you got to have a BMW. you got to have a, one of those Porsches, you, you know, that that's going to make you rich. No, it's not. Rich is being happy driving around in my Lydia soul and taking good care of it so it'll serve me well for, you know, a number of years. And in order for that little Kia soul to serve me well for a number of years, I have to put money into it. I have to make sure I take care of it. Back in the day, uh, well, when I was a kid, uh, I, I lived in New Britain, Connecticut, Britain. My mother always said, don't say never end. New Britain. I lived in New Britain, Connecticut. And um, I loved to go to the beach about 45 minutes away. And gas was pretty cheap back then. And I'd put in, I think, 50 cents worth. And I would drive to the beach and back. How I ever made it is beyond me. Along with the fact that if the oil light came on, my little trick was to slam on the brakes a little bit, you know, drive slam, drive slam, not with anybody around you, which kind of splashed the oil around and that oil light would go out. That is poverty consciousness. As I moved on uh, and had children and everything, uh, it was a one paycheck household. Uh, we managed okay. We could have done much better with better consciousness. But um, we, we got by. And there were some uh, negative um, uh, cliches. For example, you have to work hard for a living. Honestly, you, if you, you can do hard work but be so happy that you're doing it, it's like it's play. Okay? So the thought that you have to be doing something distasteful in order to, to make a living, um, that's just not true. And, uh, and you know what? I am out of time. And I just, I know there was other thing. I got all these notes I wanted to share about, you know, about prosperity. And, and uh, so the bottom line is we're going to need to talk about this some more. Um, and that is certainly a great way to embrace change in the way you think, feel, and act about prosperity. So I don't know if we're going to pick it up right away, and uh, but maybe just for the heck of it tomorrow, uh, I'll share some of the good stuff in this book, which is called Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. Uh, oh my god, it's so good. It's just there's so much. It's one of those books like if you look at it You can see that <laughs> I thought there was a lot of good stuff in it And maybe I'll get to share some of it with you in the meantime. I hope you have a wonderful evening I'm going to put my groceries away 
and get out my Triscuit <laughs> and have my afternoon snack and it's going to be wonderful. So, uh, till we see each other again, you have a wonderful day and know that you are the beloved child of a wealthy father who showers you with every good thing. God bless, and I will see you later.